the, the law of attraction will demonstrate to you at any one time what's actually going on with your life. Mm -hmm. And as, as you release more and more emotions that are harming yourself, what happens is the law of attraction changes and you find that attra you're attracting more and more interesting events rather than difficult events. And you'll be attracting more and more joyous events rather than sad events or angry events or any of those kind of things. So the law of attraction is just a wonderful way of being able to tell, see how you're, how you're progressing. Of course, that's a little bit daunting at the beginning because the law of attraction is bringing you moment after moment of all sorts of different things, triggering all sorts of emotions. But as you progress, you'll find the law of attraction will change around you. But even bigger than the law of attraction is the feelings that you get from God and, and the intensity of those feelings. You'll find that as you release different emotions and you direct your longing to God to receive her love, the intensity of those feelings that actually enter you during those moments of prayer uh, are going to just grow and grow and grow. And you'll get to a point where um, it becomes, in fact, the most strongest feelings that you've ever experienced. Uh, and, you, and they will continue to grow as you change as well. So that is also another way of seeing how, you, how you're doing. Now obviously, if that intensity of those events are not changing in your life, then obviously you're stagnant. And if you're stagnant, then look at the law of attraction. What is it bringing you? Because that, that will already be identifying the emotions that we need to work on to get beyond that point. Most people are not honest with themselves about reception of divine love. They have an intellectual concept about what receiving divine love really means. And they don't understand, that they don't yet really feel the emotions of what's going on within themselves and, and how that's changing. So, so a lot of times they're in a, st a stagnant condition. There's many people I know who have been uh, on what they think is the divine love path for 30 or 40 years, and yet are still in quite a very sad and angry condition. And the reason why that is the case is because they are refusing to acknowledge that they are actually not receiving divine love. And they are refusing to acknowledge that there is a reason why they are not receiving divine love. I have even heard some of them say that they must, there must be something wrong with the pageant messages or something must be something wrong with the way it's all being described because that's not how it is to them and all that kind of stuff. And all they are doing is not being honest with themselves. They're not being honest that there's an emotion within themselves that's just preventing that love from flowing into their heart that they are holding on to for good and death, right? And they need to release that emotion and work through that emotion before they'll receive a stronger flow of love from God. But you get to the point when you're at one with God that you'll feel that flow of emotion from God constantly. And it's like a tingling vibration throughout your entire body at that point. And so you know you're constantly in contact with God. And, and because of that feeling, you'll be constantly in a state of bliss as well. It's not bliss that's intellectually manufactured, where I think or I believe I'm in a state of bliss. It's actually you feel throughout your entire fiber that this state of bliss is where you're at. So if you're not yet at that state, then you're not yet at one with God, that's fine. Let yourself work through the emotions as to what's preventing that connection. Let yourself continue to let these emotions flow. Try to stop this thing from kicking in and telling yourself you're there when you're actually back here. You know? This is one of the biggest problems people have on earth today is that they want to believe they're on a spiritual path and they want to believe they're really progressed. And so they feel that they're really way up here when really they're right back here emotionally. And that's one of the biggest issues that I face when I'm traveling with people, is that like, quite often I'm invited to stay with people, and I know before I even go that they're not even going to cope with 10 minutes with me. <laughs> you know? and, then, and in 10 minutes I know they're just going to be angry with me. Um, and, and, and so sure enough I go there and within 10 minutes or 15 minutes they're angry with me and I've got to leave. Um, and the reason why that is, is because most people have the false conceptions of where they really are in terms of their growth, particularly if they've spent 20 or 30 years 
on spiritual paths, investigating spirituality and progressing. I remember, Gabby, when I first met your mum, one of the things she said to me about a month afterwards was, you're, you're, she told me, she said, you're telling me really that I don't know anything at all. <laughs> and I said, well, no, that's not really what I'm telling you, but if that's what it feels like, <laughs> then you need to go with that feeling. But, um, then she rang me about, she got really upset with that, really angry, and, uh, and then for about seven, six or seven months wouldn't speak to me at all. And I just kept, I just sent the occasional email, I love you, Natalie. <laughs> um, and eventually she wouldn't accept those either, so I finished up writing to a friend of hers in Barbados, can you remind Natalie that I love her? <laughs> and, uh, and, and she received one of those emails, and then, and then she decided to reread the emails from, from seven months earlier. And when she reread them, she realised that she'd grown enough in those seven months to recognise that everything that was said to her right back in those original emails was actually true. And she actually contacted me and then, and, and then admitted to me that one of the hardest emotions that she's ever had to deal with was the fact that she really didn't know anything. After 30 years of being a medium, 30 years of speaking to spirits, 30 years of being on a spiritualist path that really she didn't know anything about soul. Is it something about pride? Yeah, it's, it's that and it's also, it's also, you know how you have the feeling that you've, in, you've invested 30 years of your oh, life mm -hmm. in something and you just don't want to give it up. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like that, some, some of you may feel like that in your marriage, you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, you're not really sure whether you want to be in a marriage but you spent 30 years in it, right? And some, that counts for something. It's what we want to believe inside of ourselves most often, right? And the truth is, when it comes to our spiritual journey, what counts is how humble we can be at any one moment and how accepting we can be of new truth at any one moment. And everything that we've ever experienced in the past really doesn't count for much when it comes to, to accepting truth from God. And once we get into a state where we're, we're truly reliant on God, now we're in a state where we can really progress rapidly. And often it's our mental conceptions of not wanting to give up what we've done in the past that actually inhibit us in growing in the future. Thinking that we're somewhere where we are not. This is often confronted when we pass into the spirit world. See, a lot of people who are on spiritualist paths, I was talking with this uh, uh, lady through, we were, myself and Natalie were doing a bit of a medium session with some spirits and one lady who was a, I think her name is uh, Catherine Stokes, or, I can't quite remember her name, she was a medium in the Dorothy. UK, Dorothy, Dorothy, Stokes. Stokes. Dorothy Stokes, she was a medium in the UK in the 60s and 70s and a very good medium too, she, was, she went around doing large groups of uh, and far more accurate than, say, someone like John Edwards or someone like that is today. And she didn't charge for her, a lot of her sessions. She did it for free. She was, uh, she was quite open like that. But when she came to talk with us, she said that uh, one thing, she found the spirit world very, very difficult. And that surprised her. Because she thought after talking to spirits for, for 30 or 40 years, or so, so actually longer than that, she actually thought that when she arrived in the spirit world, it would all be a breeze. Like, mm. that she actually thought she knew everything there was to know about it. And it was only a few months earlier that she attended one of our sessions as a spirit and learnt about the divine path that she really started to feel any hope. Because for the previous, t I think it was 10 or 8 years or something, or something since she passed, <coughs> I can't remember the amount of time now. But for that previous amount of time, she was actually in quite a bit of darkness and suffering for herself because of all of these conceptions she had about the spirit world that weren't what was reality for her when she passed. And she didn't know anything about soul condition. She didn't understand what soul condition was all about. What is that? Soul condition is the condition that you have within you emotionally. So it's got nothing to do with beliefs. It's got nothing to do with intellectual concepts, it's everything to do with your real condition. Perhaps if I can illustrate that. 
Let's say I have anger with men inside of me. Well, when I pass, I will not pass into the second sphere if I have that inside of me. And it doesn't matter whether you've been abused by a man or belted around by a man or any other thing that would have happened to you here on earth. While you retain that anger with men inside of your soul, you will not ever get into the second sphere. So it's all about forgiveness? It's not all about forgiveness, no. There's a lot of other things it's about besides forgiveness. But forgiveness is one of the things. And it, but, it, but see, forgiveness again is something that needs to be from the heart. You need to release the emotions that actually cause you to not forgive. Once you release those emotions, you will automatically forgive. So anger always covers something else. So anger in this case would be covering the sadness of all the things that she experienced in her life. Now, if I'm not willing to experience those emotions, I will not progress. So I can believe all I want that I'm in a six-sphere condition or a fifth-sphere condition or I'm going to pass into a really nice location and I can believe that all I want. But what will determine the location into which I pass will be the condition of my soul, which is the real me, my emotions, my passions, my desires, my intentions, the real me, and that is where I'm going to be attracted, whatever that condition is. And that will be my attraction to a location that matches that condition. And this lady, Karen, this lady Dorothy Stokes, who is the medium, um, she was not aware of that, even as a medium, and being a medium for 30 years, she wasn't aware of that. And because of her lack of awareness of that, when she passed, she, she had so many issues to work through because firstly she demanded she want, why wasn't she where she, she thought she would be mm -hmm. right? who's in charge yeah who's in charge <laughs> it's, it's like in the, in the Robert James Lee's book at, uh, I think it's in the life of Elysian he, he mentions this priest this minister passes over and he's in rags right he's dressed in these rags and, and he says the minister says uh, I want to speak to someone in charge. Who's <laughs> 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 the creator of this universe? Yeah, who's the creator of this universe? This guy comes down here, comes down here, right now. I want to talk to who's in charge, and they've got to get me out of this rag. <laughs> <laughs> is there a Saint Peter? Sorry. No, it's just a joke. Is there a Saint Peter? Well, there is a person who was Peter who lived with me on the earth. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Does he hang around the pearly gates a lot? No. Still a lot of jokes. I was just kidding. I'm sorry. The pearly gates are are a um, well, an analogy for the gate of heaven, which is the transition between the seventh sphere and the first celestial sphere. So there sphere. is something like that. Yeah, yeah, certainly. There are locations in the spirit world that are like gates into, uh, into a new condition. Mm -hmm. And uh, you must go through a process, emotional process, to get you from one part of that, from one side of that gate to the other side of the gate. 